very much. And uh, in fact, this uh, outset funding is really a very important step for this line of research. I wanted to say, so this research is almost motivated by my own problems with the language. And I started to learn English language very late, and then I really struggled to learn this language. And then also, you know, and in this part of the world, we pay too much attention to exam, including language learning, right? So if I can pass the TOEFL test with a high score, does it mean that I can really speak the language well? And I mean, you can comment on that. Yeah. Oh, all right. So this correlation is very high, right? All right, OK. So very frankly, and then this uh, examination-oriented uh, language course is problematic. And I believe the language learning, a fundamental capability is to communicate with, with each other. If I come here just to present the, my slides to you without speaking, this is not going to be very effective. And I hope you agree with me. And then we surveyed many students, language and uh, class students, including um, students in the, uh, in the local schools. Many people commented why they don't like uh, kind of attending these mother tongue courses and things like that. And a common word they described is about boring. And then they don't have a lot of opportunity to really practice. So then also teacher, and the, we, when we have a large class here, it's impossible for me to correct each person's pronunciation, right? So these two fundamental challenges motivated us to start this project, okay? But of course, I have another very important motivation is that if we and everybody in this room, and you probably take this ability to speak uh, for granted, but after stroke, for example, and then many patients develop the condition called aphasia. They immediately lose their ability to speak. However, many of these people, they can sing a song. Can you believe that? So because basically the left hemisphere is very much involved with the language ability. But the singing involves much more areas, including the right hemisphere in the brain. Therefore, and there is a famous therapy called melodic intonation therapy, and which can actually use, can be used to train these patients to speak again. So that is another motivation. Of course, today, and because of the context of language learning, and I wanted to kind of focus on normal people's language learning. Okay? So I actually give this title called Singing and Lyrics Analysis for language learning, because there are a lot of technical challenges involved to address these problems, okay? So I wanted to give you a very brief outline what I'm talking about and what kind of challenges we faced in the beginning. For, for example, if we are talking about the using singing to facilitate language learning, okay? First of all, I read a very important paper from my colleague and collaborator in in um, Toronto, and they did an experiment, and then comparing two groups. One group, and then and the teacher just teach the language class normally. The other class, on the other hand, and then uh, the teacher uses singing to teach the content. And the result is that the other group with singing performed much better in terms of pronunciation and vocabulary retention. Okay, these are very important kind of uh, scientific foundations for our work. So then I was actually interested in decompose the problem, technical problems into a few uh, sub-problems. First of all, I wanted to understand, oh, what is actually the relationship between speech and singing? And uh, the, the voice, the sound is produced by exactly the same organ. Uh, however, the acoustic characteristics are very different, okay? So therefore, we have actually produced the very first data set. So we directly compare the speech with the singing. That is the first uh, data set <coughs> on the planet in English language. 
and the many people use our data set. And we actually annotated this data set phonetically. For every phoneme, we did this annotation. That is very tedious and expensive and time consuming. And I wanted to kind of see whether you are you are forced me to use your laptop and I don't know whether this audio works. You see, the audio does not yeah. seem to work. But anyway. Should be ready. Should be? You can play whether this works. Because then that is much more intuitive <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> So today, we are talking about a language. You should always enable this audio. So the program? Uh, the previous page. Yeah. Yes. Just to play this. Oh. Don't. You see. I cannot come. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I can't do it. OK. But don't worry. I'm sorry. All right. So I don't see any other output. So we have a problem here, and the, in fact, I have quite a number of examples. Do you? Then yes, if you, the audio does not work, is really problematic. Oh, thank you. Okay. 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 Play it. Okay, so then we recorded the other one. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Every morning you greet me. This is from exactly the same person. Okay, so then, of course, and we did this recording in our soundproof recording studio and with basically a number of NUS students and with different accents. And it's kind of interesting to notice and then if you sing a song, and you will actually somehow conceal your accent. If you speak, and your accent is quite obvious. So that is something that we have found out. Second subproject actually is about lyrics analytics. And again, and Ming is my colleague, and he is an expert in natural language processing. And we even published a paper together and then many years ago. So my key message here a lot lyrics is very important if we are using song to <coughs> for the purpose of language learning, right? And a lot of song lyrics are not simply suitable for language learning. You guys agree with me? Yes. yes. So we cannot simply pick up a song for language learning. That is simply not useful. Okay. So therefore, and then we have a lot of interesting research problems, including how complex is the lyrics and things like this so that we can pick up the right songs for the right students. Okay? I'll give you one example here. So talking about the lyrics novelty. All right, OK, these many words. There is practically not much grammar here. And then you can listen to another song. <laughs> yes. And uh, obviously, that is uh, actually kind of an interesting thing. And then also, we tried to project um, the famous million song data set and uh, into a two dimensional feature space. And then we were and very curious to see and in terms of the novelty of the lyrics. This is the first song. Okay, that is the first song. It's very high and uh, uh, on the top of this feature space. The second one. All right. 
So you can immediately see which one has a lot of novel words and which one is actually just uh, using the common words. Okay. So anyway, and we uh, uh, we are lucky enough to collaborate with a company called uh, Rick Fund, and then we have used this uh, purpose for our research. And the sub project number three is about the intelligibility of the song. I think from the previous example, you already understand what I'm talking about. So here, um, if a song has clear lyrics that people can hear the lyrics clearly, that is uh, more useful and in terms of musical recommendation or song recommendation. Here I give you also two examples. The first one is <laughs> okay, if I ask you guys to take a piece of paper to transcribe what you have heard, how many of you can do that? Raise your hand, please. Uh huh. All right, okay. That is cheating. So, the second, listen carefully. So how many of you can transcribe the, the lyrics? Raise your hand. Well, we can do a much better job, right? So that means the intelligibility of the song is very important for this. Okay. So of course, and I, I do not know how many of you are interested in the technical details because of the inter, in, uh, interdisciplinary nature. I don't want to dive too much into the technical, how we do that, and these are the, the block diagrams, how we actually handle these kind of things and then including evaluations and things like that. So sub-project number four is actually the uh, lyrics and the solo singing voice alignment. And uh, y y you can imagine if we develop a karaoke, right, these lyrics should appear together with the singing voice, right? So this is, uh, I wanted to mention actually, when I just joined NUS and, uh, uh, 16 years ago and uh, I published the paper together with me, is uh, to join the process and uh, to automatically align the lyrics and the singing voice. And uh, that system was recognized as the first one on the planet to address this problem. And it was a quite a highly cited paper. But uh, then my student uh, continued this line of work and uh, then, uh, well, as I said, uh, this is not a computer science uh, seminar. and. Uh, these are the block diagram, what we are talking about. So nowadays, there are many uh, famous kind of karaoke technology companies like uh, Sumu in the United States and Chaming Kaigu in China. And there are millions of active users. So um, some of these companies, they provide a data set for the research community to do research. But these data set are quite dirty and uh, noisy, it's, it's not very useful. We try to filter out the useful uh, information so that we can form a subset of that that is going to be much more useful for the research community. So these are <coughs> the data set and the code, how we have addressed this problem. And then, of course, and then automatic evaluation of the singing voice is a very important uh, problem. So automatic pronunciation evaluation of the singing voice, right? Because then articulation is such an important thing in our project, and uh, that is part of the active learning. Otherwise, you are just wrote remembering this vocabulary, and uh, as I just presented in the beginning. So singing, actively using these words, and then speaking, singing, they uh, are going to be much more effective methods. And uh, I'm going to quickly go through this, uh, how this thing works, and then including we have, for example, singing voice, and then lyrics. These are available data set, and then we use duration modeling to do the singing adapted automatic speech recognition. So this is the key technology here. So far, this uh, um, our S lines the karaoke still have not yet used our own speech recognizer because this technology is not yet ready. We are doing research for that, but we used this Google Speech API to replace this block right now. But still, it works to some extent. 
with a lot of limitations, of course. And uh, again, this, there are a lot of kind of interesting <coughs> technical details, including how do we score the singing voice, right? So this is called a phonetic posteriorgram, and then we can use this to evaluate how well you pronounced these particular words, or phoneme, actually. So then, based on this thing, we compute the scoring metric, and things like this. This works to some degree. We are still kind of working on it. And in fact, and we also compared the machine scoring with the human scoring. And we, they correlate quite nicely. And these are the contributions, of course. And we have the data set, we have the code, and the things like that. We put everything together to build a useful app. Okay? So that is, this S-Lines project is not only about building a mobile app, but we have a lot of technical challenges, as I already explained. So this project is called a Singing and a Listening to Improve Our Natural Speaking. Okay. In short, uh, S-Lines, I already explained this particular paper, the efficacy <coughs> of singing in foreign language learning is the kind of pedagogical foundation and uh, to support this line of research. So basically it says, this paper says, singing can be intrinsically motivating, attention focusing, and uh, simply enjoyable for learners of all age. And therefore, it's, we call it joyful and engaging learning, yes. All right, and then also kind of children were tested on their ability to recall the passage and so on and pronounce uh, English vocabulary and the translate and the things like this. This song advantage preserved after six months delay. That means and uh, this neuron somehow worked quite magically uh, in favor of the thing group. So that is uh, uh, the app and the, which is uh, currently available in the Apple Store and then um, yes, that Android uh, Play Store. Uh, of course, this is still a research prototype and um, things like that, but it's already kind of you. What language? I'm sorry? What language? Oh, at this moment, we cover only two languages, and uh, <coughs> uh, English and Chinese. But it's going to be relatively straightforward to extend these to other two official languages in Singapore, including Malay and um, the Indian language. Okay, so. Uh, that is just a label problem. It's yeah. not a technical challenge. Okay, so something like that. But uh, and, uh, there are a lot of interesting research problems and things like that. And uh, one of my students is, I just <coughs> discussed with him. We are even considering the possibility to use deep learning to automatically generate uh, lyrics, given a, a a familiar tune, right? Because you know, and a lot of uh, existing lyrics, they are not useful, they are too simple, too repetitive, and things like that. And then some topics are not even suitable for learning. So too violent, and uh, you most topics that is not suitable for language learning anyway, okay? So you're saying that the song, it doesn't need to be unique, it could be the same music. Yes. The lyrics could change, and that can help people enunciate. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So because the tune, you already remember this tune, then it does not actually incur any burden mm -hmm. and to learn this tune, and you are already familiar with that. Mm -hmm. the, what you can focus is on the words, the, the vocabulary there. Yes? So, but, um, I may, maybe you have data that, that suggests otherwise, but the whole um, area of ex research on expertise shows that when mm -hmm. people really know something really, really well, it actually hurts them in learning something. So, for example, there's uh -huh. studies on expert bridge players, and they put them against, you know, novices, mm -hmm. and they obliterate them, of course, mm -hmm. in, in a game of bridge. Mm -hmm. But when the experimenters changed the rules just slightly, uh -huh. they actually got beaten by the novices because the novices were bogged down with all of their expertise and heuristics that they had developed over many years. Um, it strikes me that maybe if so some of these songs are very, very well known. Um, Edelweiss, everyone knows. Edelweiss. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I think it would be an interesting thing to 
study whether previous knowledge of the lyrics is interfering with supplanting new lyrics with language to be learned in that. Okay. Um, personally, I, I have not done any kind of experiment to validate this. But as you know, and there are a lot of children's and, uh, uh, songs which can be translated into different languages. Mm -hmm. For example, happy birthday to you, these kind of songs, is translated into many different languages, right? So it, it seems to work quite nicely. Um, I guess, I guess yeah. what I mean is that um, if, if the intention is to change the lyrics fundamentally, uh -huh. not just switch the language, uh -huh. change it fundamentally for yeah. the sake of learning, mm -hmm. because you're putting stuff like uh, the capitals of countries into a song, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you switch it out, the lyrics that people learned it uh -huh. with, with new lyrics, I, I wonder if that could potentially be a barrier to learning these new lyrics. Very interesting. And uh, I'm not sure who is interested in doing an experiment mm -hmm. to validate this. Yes. So I'm also thinking yeah. of whether learning it this way will confine your natural speaking ability uh, to those things that you, lyrics that you find in song. Let's say if I were trying to develop some natural speaking ability in academic English, you know, do I need those songs with a lot of academic lyrics or something? Can you translate? No, 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 no. no. To be honest with you, my, yes, my take here, based on my experience so far, this kind of learning method is mostly effective for the beginner. And if uh, we have done, ex using this, we published a paper and based on <coughs> 16 students in the US. And they managed to improve, actually these people uh, managed to improve their pronunciation using this app. But it did not actually benefit much with their vocabulary because they know this vocabulary uh, already. So something like this. So therefore, my next phase is trying to test this uh, prototype in a primary school environment. So, and uh, actually thanks to you, and uh, we have established the connection with Yunnan Primary School, and we are in the process of discussion and then to use two classes there to do a comparative study. And one class, using our app, the other one do their usual business, and then we will see and then how much the performance will differ in, let's say, a few months' time. So this will be a solid proof whether this helps or damages, right? So the good thing in uh, Singapore is a very good development now is grade one and grade two in primary school, they don't have any examination. So we can do this test relatively easily. Yeah. Yes. And when you said that, the thing I thought was um, you could always sing the, the known verses with the mm -hmm. given lyrics and the given melody. And then you could teach with the third verse that no one's ever heard because you generated that third verse. Uh -huh. You had the incremental vocabulary uh -huh. um, that is necessary for the target domain. So yeah. you could always stay with what is known and then auto generate new lyrics the same way. That is actually a a possible approach to to try that. So <coughs> therefore, I would like to say the real challenge for us is not developing the technology, is really find a partner and the, in the real educational setting to test it seriously. And then then we will have a, okay, another very important thing, I think, and the, our colleague and the, who just gave the uh, presentation about the Korean learning, right? So, and uh, you will have difficulties to listen to every student's pronunciation and things like this. Evaluation is, is very time consuming. But in this case, our technology can help because for every student, if they practice at home, you can monitor that. And then we can analyze this pronunciation automatically and give you a statistics who performed very well, who performed poorly, and things like that. You can pay attention to these people who have problems. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Yeah. So, therefore, as I said, that this collaboration between educators and um, technologists make a lot of sense. That's why, and that is another proof. This alternative is a great idea to have. Right? <laughs>